Easter, everybody. Thanks for joining our online service today. If there's anything we can pray for you about, just look at the description and click the link below. everyone. We're so glad you were able to tune in and join us today. We hope you're encouraged by the fact that Jesus is alive and that he lives to intercede for us. We're going to continue to sing about our risen Savior. And if you're tuning in for the first time, we're going to have the lyrics across the screen. And we would encourage you to sing along if you'd like to, or to just listen to these words and let each lyric fill your heart with hope to know that Jesus is alive and we serve a risen King. So let's continue to worship him together today. Carried for us 
King surrendered the final work of perfect love. Hear his cry, Father, forgive them. Spoken for us, spoken for us. When he said it is finished, our hope had just begun. to Christ who condescended, took 
torn flesh to ransom mine. Come behold the wondrous mystery, he the perfect son of man, in his living, in his suffering, never trace nor stain of See the true and better Adam come to save the hell-bound man, Christ the great and sure fulfillment of the law in him we stand. And come behold the wondrous mystery. Christ the Lord upon the tree In the stead of ruined sinners Hangs the Lamb in victory oh, See the price of our redemption See the Father's plan unfold Bringing many sons to glory Grace unmeasured saying, come behold the wondrous mystery, slain by death, the God of life. And come behold the wondrous mystery, slain by death, the God of life. Oh, but no grave could e'er restrain him. Praise the Lord, he is alive, oh. Fill my heart, and there 
Good morning and happy Easter to you. Thank you for being a part of our Easter celebration here at Westbridge. And you know, one of the impressions that has been coming back again and again throughout this season is God's providential care for us in the realm of the nourishment, soul nourishment that, that He is giving us throughout this season. About six months ago, as we were finalizing this new message series that we launched today that we're calling Celebration of Hope, we had no idea that we would be in this season as a church family and, and as a world. And looking back, though, I, I see God's providence as He is leading us from today into May to focus on songs of hope in the book of Psalms in His Word. And just a neat picture of, of his care over us and just what our soul needs to, to run with perseverance through this time. I picture our Sunday gatherings uh, right now being kind of like a marathon aid station and praying that each week as we come to another song of hope, you receive just the soul nourishment that you need as you pick up another cup of, of truth and run with that truth through the week. Well, our family was watching the movie 1917 a couple weeks ago, and a, a movie where two young soldiers are handed a mission, a simple mission. It's to, to deliver a message. The message has huge implications. Their job is to take that message from one battlefront to another battlefront in 24 hours, and what's at stake are the lives of thousands of soldiers. And as those two young men take their first step onto enemy territory, you can just feel the, the fear welling up in their hearts. And then with step after step, they're running through enemy territory. Bullets are flying. They're diving, you know, into foxholes. They're, they're jumping into a river at one time. And they're running through all of this danger with courage. And as I was watching this movie, the impression that landed on me, it was just rocking me throughout the movie, was the parallel to our own lives as followers of Christ. Because as we have been given a, a simple mission, which is follow Jesus into a life of love, which involves sharing a message of hope, we too run through enemy territory. And the question is, how do we run with courage when the dangers around us and, and the resistance that we feel it's very real. Think about the, uh, the reality that we're in right now, and, and we're faced daily with the reality of death and disease. And, and this raises tensions even within our relationships where we feel the tension and, and, and even the dysfunctions at times that, that really we know the enemy of our soul is he's at work in all of these things. And yet, how do we live out the mission that God has given to each one of us, our unique life calling that he's given? How do we live it out with courage and with hope? Well, the answer to this question is, is found in, comes through really a really neat story that we get to sit on the front row and, and watch the transformation of a life in this realm, moving from fear to courage. And the, the life, it's the life of Peter, who, if you know the story of Jesus, he was the guy who, before Jesus is, took our sin to the cross, fear gripped his heart, he froze, and he denied Christ three times. And yet we watch him move from paralyzed by fear to living with bold courage as he shared the message of hope that, that was given to him. And, and you say, well, what happened to Peter? We watch him in the book of Acts just lit up with courage what happened to him. And we know it's one reality. He saw his risen Savior. 
The resurrection of Jesus Christ transformed the life of Peter. The resurrection became the, really the theme of Peter's message, and it was Peter that God tapped on the shoulder there in the, when the church started to say, hey, let them know what's happening. In Acts 2, Peter begins to preach about the resurrection of Christ, and within his first, this first message that Peter gives, he references a song of hope. It's a song that, that we're going to soak in today and, and we'll be challenged to soundtrack, to, to learn it, to live it, to let it be a part of our thinking as we follow Christ this week. And it's a song that if we will soundtrack, it will enable us to run with courage as we follow Christ through enemy territory. So let's drop in on this moment. It's Acts chapter 2, and this is where... We, we call this the day of Pentecost, but this is where God gave his, the followers of Jesus the gift of the Holy Spirit to empower them to be a witness to the reality of, that Jesus is the Messiah and that he, he has risen from the dead. Peter is actually talking to the very people who crucified Jesus here in Acts 2, and we will uh, drop right in into this message. Peter is giving reason after reason why he believes Jesus is alive and why really we can believe this as well. And we'll look at three reasons as we drop into this moment. Acts chapter 2, verse 22, Peter says, Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you, by miracles, by wonders, by signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. He's saying, guys, look back and, and remember what Jesus did. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate or definite plan and foreknowledge. He's reminding them, you know, God was in this. this the fact that Jesus was crucified did not surprise God. We see the sovereignty of, of God in this moment, but also the human responsibility. As he says, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him on the, on the cross. But God, two simple words that just explode with hope, but God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it is impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Peter says, believe that Jesus is alive. First reason, the power of God displayed in the life of Jesus is a sign to this. Here he's saying, guys, why believe Jesus is alive? It's because the power of God, you saw it as, he, as you, he lived among us. Remember the guy that was lame and, and he was walking. You saw him, the person that was blind now seeing. Remember Lazarus. He was dead. I, I mean, there were eyewitnesses to this, dead for d several days. And Jesus called him out of that grave. And the greatest sign of all is the power of God working through the very life of Jesus, where Jesus said days before his crucifixion, destroy this temple and I will rise it again in three days. And he is living. It's the power of God bearing witness and evidence that, that he is the Messiah. He goes on, though, another reason in verse 25 he says, David said this about him, and then he begins to quote Psalm 16, verses 8 to, to 11, as he says, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body will also rest in hope, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. You will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the path of life. You fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch, patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was promised, was a prophet, and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. Second reason to believe that Jesus is the Messiah and that he is alive. David says, or uh, Paul says, or Peter <laughs> says here, the prophecy of David points to the resurrection of Jesus. 
And here Peter is looking back, you know, over a thousand years to this prophecy and saying, hey, when David wrote this, inspired by the Holy Spirit, he, he was not speaking just of his experience, which this was David's experience. He was speaking as a prophet, and this very text would be ultimately fulfilled in not just King David, but the King of Kings, our Messiah, Jesus Christ. Saying like, this is God's plan. And look back, we see it even in Scripture written a thousand plus years ago. But he goes on, one more reason to believe that Jesus is the Messiah and that he is alive is in verse 32. As he simply says this, God has raised Jesus to life and we are all witnesses of it. I I see Peter looking around to the rest of the, the Jesus followers there and saying, guys, we're witnesses of this. We've seen him. Believe, repent, and believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior of our sins. The resurrection of Jesus Christ changed everything. Peter went from cowering in the shadows to living with courage, a bold witness for Jesus because his focus was locked in on our risen Lord. So how do we step into this reality as well? Well, I can't help but think at dinner time that evening as, as Peter gathered with his, his family and maybe some friends that someone might have asked him, hey, Peter, how did you know that Psalm 16 was about Jesus? How did you know that wasn't just about David? Now, we don't know the answer to that for sure. God could have just given him that information there on the spot as he was preaching. But I can't help but think that this information came out of a conversation that he had with Jesus at some point during the time, the 40 days that Jesus was on earth before he ascended back into heaven. As Luke tells us in Luke chapter 24, verse 44, it says, he says this, Jesus is talking and it's, Jesus says, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses the prophets, and the Psalms. And then he opened their minds so that they could understand the Scriptures. And he told them, This is what is written, The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and the repentance for forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And I can't help but think, And as Jesus opened their minds to these scriptures, one of the Psalms he took them to was Psalm 16. And I can't help but think he may have said, guys, you're going to need this. You're going to need this for your own journey because this is how you run through enemy territory with courage. What's so powerful about this Psalm as we understand that verses 8 to 11 give us a window into what Jesus was thinking is that it helps us step into that same reality. In verses 8 to 11, what we discover is we see what Jesus saw. We think what he thought, we feel what he felt, and we are able to go where he he went as we follow him. This is a resurrection song. It's the song of where we see the resurrection, even in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament. And it's a song given to us to sing, to, to soundtrack, to live on as we follow Christ through the ups and downs of our lives as well. How do we run with courage through enemy territory? It's by soundtracking this song. And so let's soundtrack it together. It enables us or helps us make four moves that we can just make as we, we uh, Sing this song. We live on this song throughout this week, but we'll make them together right now. We'll go back to the original version in uh, Psalm 16, the David's version. So if you would, join me there in Psalm 16, and we'll lock in on verses 8 to 11. The first move that this psalm helps us make is to see what Jesus saw. We see what he saw. What did he see? Verse 8 says, I keep my eyes always on the Lord. As Jesus lived out his life, his eyes were locked in on his Father in heaven. Notice he owns the responsibility for the focus of his eyes. He says, I 
will. He's made a decision, a resolve. I will always keep my eyes on the Lord. The day will come for all of us when despair and death and disease and dysfunction will tempt us to take our eyes off the Lord. The reality is we have to live in the mess and deal with the mess. But even in the mess, guys, this is so important, especially in a season like what we're in, is that we resolve with a warrior's resolve. I will keep my eyes always on the Lord. Did you know that you, we as humans were never meant to see evil? Interesting to, to think about. We, we don't know what it's like to live without evil around us. But evil is, dis, is defined as the absence of God. Evil is the absence of God as, as a darkness is the absence of light. And we were never meant to see life without God present. The moment that you see your life without God present, fear will own you. And that's what the enemy of our soul wants. But how do we run with courage through the effects of evil? We must see God. We must allow every thought to be enlightened with the beauty of His presence, the power of His presence, the love of His presence. And as we do, as we fix our eyes on Him and we resolve, I keep my eyes always on the Lord, fear melts, courage hits our heart, and we're empowered to run on and live out the life mission that He's given us. The second move that this song enables us to make or helps us make is to think what Jesus thought. We see it in the second part of verse 8 where he says, With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. (laughs) What was Jesus thinking? What was David thinking? Is When we put our eyes on the Lord, what do we think? With him at my right hand, unshakable. Now, why is this so important? It's because our circumstances shake us. This week we had, you know, a wind come through our town and man, it's shaking things. And so are the circumstances of our lives. It just, they can shake us to our core. But with him at my right hand, we can claim the, the reality. I'm unshakable. Unshakable to do what? To love God with all my heart, soul, mind, strength, and to love the people around me. And yes, circumstances are always going to be changing, but it can't change the empowering presence that he provides as he stands here at my right hand, unshakable. So we see what he saw, we think what he thought, but then this song helps us to feel what he felt. And we see this in verses 9 and 10. He says, Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your Holy One, your faithful one, see decay. What was he feeling? And it's the joy of his salvation. He says, my, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. Can't help but overflow in praise. And my body, <laughs> this body, it's going to rest in death, right? It's going to fall apart. But as it rests in death, it's secure. And I love the way Peter says it, it will rest in hope. Because one day, The giver of life is going to raise up this body. It's not going to be left there in the grave. It's going to be resurrected, a new body, a glorified body, immortal, powerful, glorious in ways we don't even understand at the moment. And the result of that is joy. And then one more move that this helps us make. We we see what Jesus saw. We think what he thought. We feel what he felt. And then we go where he leads. Verse 11 says, you make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence and with eternal pleasures at your right hand. And what a gift to, to, to know that God is faithful to lead us into the path of life. As he's at our right hand and as we are looking to him, he guides us step by step, right? He's our good shepherd. And, and where is he taking us? Into the path of life. It's life at its best. We know that that it's the paradox of the cross. It it will involve suffering. Jesus said, take up your cross, follow me, and and in this world you will have trouble. So there's temporary suffering. 
But don't you love, you see the J curve here, the eternal joy that he leads us into, eternal pleasures at your right hand. And it's unique for each one of us. Your journey right now, maybe God is leading you to hunker down in your house and just be there and be with him, be with the ones you love and connect and live out the mission that he's given you in that place. For others of us, even now, I uh, learned this week that one of the doctors in our community, a Christ follower, Becky Hawk, was nudged to jump in her car and drive to New York to go right into the epicenter of, of this, this pandemic to be the presence of Christ using her medical skills. Wherever God takes us, it's the path of life, and we can follow him into that. Even as we, uh, we go into tough times and experience hurt and pain and, and all the stuff of, of this messed up life, living under the curse, the joy of God's still there, isn't it? If you've walked with God for some time, you've experienced this often. He is closest to us in our toughest moments. And ultimately, we know he will fill us with eternal pleasures at his right hand. So how do we run with courage through enemy territory? How do we carry on living out our unique life mission, delivering the message of hope that God's given us and living out the life of love as we follow Christ, even as the clouds of despair land in our life and we, we navigate the mess of this life. And what a gift God has given us here, a song of hope that helps us keep our eyes fixed on our risen Savior and a song to soundtrack. And may I encourage you this week to just carry this with you to, to memorize it, to think about it, to, to just know it cold so that as you hit your moments of, of despair and, and tough times, that God can use this in your heart to fill you with courage so that we might see what Jesus saw, think what he thought, feel what he felt, and go where, where he leads us. There's a picture that I can't shake as I've been thinking about today and thinking about this message, which was shared with me a couple weeks ago. It was a, a scene described by Helen and Adam Arfa, uh, members of our church family, as they were taking the tour of our local planetarium at our high school. And Mr. Birdsall was, you know, showing them all the constellations of the stars. And, and at one point he said, hey, you want to see something really neat? He said, watch this. And he fast forwards the movement of the stars. And the sky that just went a, a uh, blur of white circles centering around one star. Every star in the sky was moving, changing, spinning around one star. <laughs> it was the North Star. And it blew Helen and Adam away as immediately they thought, here's another picture God has placed in his universe of his unchanging character. As he says, guys, keep your eyes on me. And you know, moments like this, in our, our, we, we feel like everything around us is just spinning and moving, and it can seem so chaotic. And it's especially in these moments that we must, as this psalm calls us to, I fix my eyes always on the Lord. And with Him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. We serve a risen Savior. He lives today. And because he is alive, those of us who have put our faith in him are forever alive. And you may be listening to this and thinking, you know what? I don't have a relationship with God through faith in Jesus. And I, I, the good news today is his invitation is open to you. And I love the way Peter says it in Acts 2.21, right before he shares the, the message we looked at today. He says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And you say, what do you mean saved? And to be saved is to be forgiven of our sin before God and given the promise of a relationship with God. That's eternal life, where we enter into a love relationship with him that's forever. And he is our source of life into eternity. You say, well, what does it mean to call on the name of the Lord? And it's simply crying out to him for help for the forgiveness of our sin. There's no amount of good we can do to Fix what we broke as we have all sinned against God. And so we just come to him and say, God, I know I need your mercy. I can't fix what I've done that's wrong before you. But it's believing, as Jesus said, that 
that you gave your son Jesus to die as a perfect sacrifice for me on the cross and that you promised, as he said, eternal life, which is this relationship to everyone who calls on you and trust you, trust Jesus as the, the one who paid for their sin. And if you haven't come to a point in your life or there's not been a moment where you've just knelt before God and confessed your sin to him, asked for forgiveness, and then looked to Jesus and said, I believe, Jesus, that you are my only hope, that you died for me and I trust you as the Savior of my life. I trust you as the one who can forgive my sin and, and give me this eternal life. If you haven't done that, may I invite you to, to just do that today, to cry out to God in your own words, just come to him, kneel before him, maybe find a quiet spot at home or take a walk and just kneel before him and, and cry out to him for help and receive the promise of eternal life. Jesus said, to, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will not die, but live. And I encourage you to look into the book of John, the gospel, which John sums it up, where he says, these things have been written so that you might know, so you might believe on Jesus and that you might know that you have eternal life. For those of us who know Christ and who love him and have been walking with him, I'm convinced that God is provident, uh, providential and uh, sovereign in how he gives us just what we need for the next step in our journey. And I believe if you're a part of Westbridge, we're going to need Psalm 16, verses 8 to 11 this week. And so may I encourage you to soundtrack these. Um, let them be part of your thinking and let them lead you into a clear view of our risen Savior that we might run with courage through enemy territory for his glory. Do you join me in prayer? Father, we thank you for the word that you've given us today that sustains us. Thank you for this picture of Peter who was at one time frozen by fear, but then once he saw you and his eyes were locked in on you, that uh, he was living out his life mission with, with boldness and courage. And a song that was on his heart and his mind was this song, Psalm 16. Lord, let it be on our heart and mind as well as we go into whatever it is that you've called us to this week. Jesus, may we see what you saw, think what you thought, feel what you felt, and go where you lead for your glory. And we pray all this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. In the darkness we were waiting without hope and without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. To reconcile the lost To redeem the whole creation You did not despise the cross For even in your suffering You saw to the other side Knowing this was our salvation Jesus, for our sake you died Sing praise the Father the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings.
that you rose all of heaven held its breath till that stone was moved for good for the lamb had conquered death and the dead rose from their tombs and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who'd come to the father are restored and the church of christ was born then the spirit lit the flame now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel shall not faint by his blood and in his name in his freedom i am free for the love of jesus christ who has resurrected me know more about beginning a relationship with Jesus or if there's any way we can be praying for you, you can text 317-708-0362. We'd love to help you know how you can have peace in a relationship with Jesus forever. Thank you for watching our service today. Have a great Easter.